It doesn't get any more legendary than the Porsche 934 Turbo RSR. This track-eating monster of the late 70s dominated and won many racing events. One of the last street-legal race cars, based on the 911 Turbo, was FIA-approved for Group 4 racing. I'm Marcus Firegon, and I chose this casting for the Le Mans Legends 164 scale die-cast racing series. I apologize for the late start of this event. Most of these cars arrived two years ago. Hopefully they still run well today. I've made some enhancements to the race layout. So we're going to have two qualifying sessions, starting with qualifying session one right now, and then qualifying session two at 2 p.m. this afternoon. That will determine the driver's starting positions, and the race will take place tomorrow at 3 p.m. Let's take a quick look at the Snow Valley East track. From the start, we go down through Thunderbird Ranch. Then it's Weber's Corner, the Switchback, Snow Valley Loop, through Tanker's Bend, into the Corner of Champions, and then to the finish. We have 12 drivers. Let me introduce them. Cars will be qualifying in the order of their car number. First up is Blake, driving for Underdogs Unleashed. This Porsche weighs in at 49.97 grams. Blake is one of two Canadian teams and drivers in this event. We're here today at Snow Valley East, the open road track. It's a Canadian track and it's home of the Snow Valley Racers. Here he comes, looking a little slow on the last leg. 8.305 seconds. Uh, so it is a little bit slower than we were expecting. Blake will get to work on his car a bit and uh, attempt a better time this afternoon at 2. Now it's Bolo Brown of Miniature Car Racing, weighing in at 33.86 grams. Let's see if Bolo Brown can set a fast time today. He's taking it a bit cautious here. Looks like another uh, slower run than expected. 7.919 seconds. That does beat Blake's time. Now we have Igor Baron of Eyes Up Racing, weighing in at 34.84 grams. Looks like another slow run. He got a little sideways, slammed on the brakes. 8.820 seconds. It's Agent 11 of the NJ Drive Racing Team, weighing in at 39.35 grams. Looks like he's having some issues. Can't navigate the first turn. This isn't looking good. No, oh, it's stalled out. It's going to record a zero time. And I'm pleased to announce professional Falcon Motorsports driver Joel Erickson will be joining us. His car weighs 34.69 grams. Joel may be new to diecast racing, but he's a seasoned driver. Let's see what he can do with this car. Oh no, he crashed. That looked like a 360 spin on his roof. I hope he's okay. Oh, this is not good. I haven't mentioned yet, but Falcon is sponsoring this race event. And they sent two of their drivers to compete. This, this isn't good. It looks like a bad crash. I actually had uh, four drivers teams back out of this event. Uh, Bobby Disco from Play Z Diecast, John 
Samuel from M&M Racing League, John Receiver from Jack John and Katie Racing, and Cyril Grandet from JMS Racing Team. So I needed 12 cars. So I got two more teams to join. I think that was uh, Papa Pugsley from Manchild Motorsports and Johnny Walker from Nunskull Racing. Um, and then I had the Falcon Motors fill in the last two spots. So they were just kind of filling in. It's unfortunate we had this accident. So the word is Joel's going to be okay. He's just being checked out in the local hospital. Uh, his car is a wreck though, as you can see. Uh, they're going to have to work on that, see if he can make the qualifying later this afternoon. So let's see how his teammate does. Also from Falcon Motorsports, we have Alessio Piccarellio. His car weighs in at 36.21 grams. A solid run, a little bit of drifting. 7.233 seconds, that's the best time set so far. So we're at the halfway point, that's 6 out of 12 cars that have run their first qualifying lap. And on the leaderboard we've got Alessio with 7.233 seconds, followed by Bolo Brown, Blake, and Igor Barron. And now a word from our sponsor, Falcon Tires. Falcon Tires. Remember, if you don't have Falcon Tires, you just have those crappy plastic wheels. And next up is Johnny Walker of Numskull Racing, weighing in at 49.71 grams. Nice drift around the bank turn. 6.375 seconds. That's an incredible time. That will put him in pole position for now. And it's Triple B of Cheap Thrills Racing. 51.26 grams. Looking like a good run for Triple B. 6.503 seconds, another incredible time. That will put him in uh, P2. Next up is the Crazy Canuck of the A-Team, weighing in at 49.52 grams. And obviously the Crazy Canuck is our second Canadian driver and Canadian team in this event. Six point five six eight seconds, another good time. That'll put him in P three for now. Now it's Sarge of Code Three Motorsports weighing in at fifty point two eight grams. Code Three Motorsports did an excellent job detailing this car. This is the the most uh, historically accurate livery job. Six point two zero three seconds. That, my friends, is a new record for this event. That'll put him in P one. And now the second last car of this morning's qualifying session is Papa Pugsley for Manchild Motorsports, weighing in at forty seven point eight three grams. Six point six five four seconds. That will put him in P five. 
And the last car for this morning's session is Mark Pan of Grumpy Cloud Racing, weighing in at 49.10 grams. Now I have heard that he's having some issues with his suspension. Well, and that's it my friends. It's a good looking car, but unfortunately, catastrophic suspension failure. We'll be taking it to Plasma Force Garage, our local garage, and working with the teams to fix their cars. And here's the current qualifying order after qualifying session one. And we'll be rejoining you this afternoon at two for qualifying session two, starting from the bottom car and working our way back up to the top. So right now we have Code 3 Motorsports, Numbskull Racing, Cheap Thrills Racing, The A-Team, Manchild Motorsports, Falcon Motorsports, Miniature Car Racing, Underdogs Unleashed, Eyes Up Racing, NJ Drive Team, Vulcan Motorsports, and last but not least, Grumpy Cloud Racing. Brought to you by the Canadian Driving Club with Marcus Firegon and the Snow Valley Racers. Marcus Firegon here with round two of the qualifying session. Let's first recap some of the highlights from this morning's qualifying session. It was Sarge of Code 3 Motorsports setting this fabulous lap time of 6.203 seconds. Sarge is on provisional pole for this event. Let's see how we do in qualifying session two. There was tragedy too, from suspension failures to horrible crashes like Joel Erickson's from Vulcan Motorsports. It's a real reminder to us diecast racers just how dangerous this sport can be. Just remember next time you're watching a diecast race that these diecast builders are putting everything on the line for the win. So here's the results of this morning's qualifying session. Uh, for this afternoon, we're going to qualify them in reverse order. So from the worst qualifying times and then work our way back up to the pole sitter. So we start off with Mark Pan, uh, who had a zero time due to a catastrophic suspension failure. Then it will be Joel, who you saw crashed. Uh, Agent 11, who wasn't able to complete the course, stalled out. And then Igor Barron with a time of 8.820 seconds. Let's take a quick look at the Snow Valley East track. From the start, we go down through Thunderbird Ranch. Then it's Weber's Corner, the Switchback, Snow Valley Loop, through Tanker's Bend, into the Corner of Champions, and then to the finish. So first up is Mark Pan of Grumpy Cloud Racing and our Plasma Force Garage is very proud of the effort and work they put into restoring this car. We completely took it apart, put it together again and let's see how it runs. A little bit slow. Oh no, we stalled out. That's our second zero time in a row. So Mark Pan is still 12th and uh, I guess disqualified from the event. Joel Erickson of Falcon Motorsports is back with a backup car. Let's see how he does. We'll never forget that horrific crash that he had earlier this morning. If he fails to complete this run a second time, he'll be out just like Grumpy Cloud Racing. Oh no, what was that? He got right up in the air there, but he recovered. Well, slowing down for the corner of champions. It's not going to be a good time. 7.726 seconds. Let's see that again. Oh, he gets right up in the air there. He jumps lanes. I haven't seen that happen before. Goes from the inside lane to the outside lane. Wow. 
Well, that moves him up to the seventh spot in qualifying. And it's Agent 11 of the NJ Drive Racing Team. They stalled out going into Weber's Corner. Not able to uh, pop this car apart with the way it was built, uh, but put lots of dry lube on the wheels and really worked them in. And let's uh, see if we can get an improvement here. Okay, well, it looks like adding uh, expired dry lube is not helping here. Another zero for the NJ Drive Racing Team and another disqualification from the race. Now it's Igor Barron of Eyes Up Racing. Previous time of 8.820 seconds. His dry lube might have expired, so we added our own dry lube. Uh, we believe ours is expired as well. So let's see if it improves. 6.889 seconds. There we go. Well, that moves Igor Baron up to P6. That's a good spot for Eyes Up Racing. Next up is Blake of Underdogs Unleashed. Let's see if adding expired dry lube helps here. 8.305 seconds is the time to beat. Six point seven one seven seconds, not bad. That puts Blake in P six. So Underdogs Unleash moves up to the lead pack. Unfortunately it moves Igor Baron down to seventh. And it's Bolo Brown of Miniature Car Racing. We added a touch of dry lube here too. See if we can improve his time from seven point nine one nine seconds. I don't know, still looks a little off the pace to me. Oh, a disappointing 8.541 seconds. Don't know what went wrong there. It didn't seem to help adding the dry lube. It's got negative effects. No change to Bolo Brown's position. The 7.919 seconds stick. Now a word from our sponsor, Falcon Tires. Falcon Tires. And remember, if you don't have Falcon Tires, you just got those crappy plastic tires. Uh, this just in, I, we're expecting a lawsuit for a miniature car racing for tampering with their vehicle before the event. Well, we're halfway through qualifying this afternoon, and we have Alessio Piccarello of Falcon Motorsports. Going to try to improve upon their time of 7.233 seconds. Seven point six six one seconds. Not an improvement. He's going to stick with his seven point two three three second time, which puts him just ahead of his teammate Joel. Papa Pugsley of Manchild Motorsports with a current time of six point six five four seconds. Oh, almost spun out in Tanker's Bend. 6.996 seconds. Not an improvement. Going to stay in P5 for now. And it's the Crazy Canuck of the A team currently in P4 with a time of 6.568 seconds. Six point five four six seconds. That's an improvement. Let's see where he stands. 
The A team still in P4, even with the improved time. It's Triple B of Cheap Thrills Racing, currently in P3, with a time of 6.503 seconds. And he sets a new time, 6.438 seconds. Triple B remains in P3. And it's Johnny Walker of Numskull Racing, currently in P2, with 6.375 seconds. Oh! Have you ever hit your head while filming? 6.159 seconds. That's incredible. That's a new track record for today. That puts him in P1. Sarge is going to have to make up the gap of 44 one hundredths of a second. And it's Sarge of Code 3 Motorsports. Was in P1. Now he's in P2. Let's see what he can pull off. Or is that 44 one thousandths of a second? Because it'd be 4.4 one hundredths of a second. 6.117 seconds. He does it. A new, new track record for today. Oh my goodness. There you have it. Sarge in P1. Johnny Walker, P2. Triple B, P3. The Crazy Canuck, P4. Papa Pugsley, P5. Blake, P6. And in the second group, it's Igor Barron in P7. P8, Alessio. P9, Joel. And P10, Bolo Brown. Unfortunately, Agent 11 and Mark Pan were unable to get a qualifying time. Well, that's it. We'll see you race day tomorrow at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And big news, we have an award for the winner who will be receiving this trophy with their name on it and the event. Hold the phone. This just in. Apparently, Mark Pan of Grumpy Cloud Racing is going to do a third and final run. I didn't know we could do this, but apparently there's provisions in the rules. A third run can be made uh, if repairs are done to the car. Don't believe me? Go to redlinederby.com and check out the rules for the event yourself. Wait a minute, I'm the host. You have to believe me. Here we go. Mark Pan, Grumpy Cloud Racing, run number three. Are those different wheels on the car? Word is, this is a complete chassis swap. So far it's working. Can you make it to the end? That's the chassis off the crashed Falcon Motorsports car. And he does it. 6.653 seconds. Wonder where that puts him in the standings. That would have put him in P5. But unfortunately, also according to the rules, a major change to the car and a third run, you get put to the back of the pack. He'll have to make up ground during the race event tomorrow if he wants to advance. It doesn't seem fair that we didn't fix up NJ Drive Racing Team's car, but it was buttoned up so well we couldn't get it apart, and we only had the one chassis from that crash. Well, enough said. Joining me here is Sarge of Code 3 Motorsports. You made some really good qualifying runs today, Sarge. Congratulations on getting pole position for the race. What do you contribute most to the success of today's runs? Well, Marcus, uh, Code 3 Motorsports really put together a good car here. We came in just at max weight. I think we're the second heaviest car here. But really, I have to say Falcon tires really help us get through that tanker's bend. Have really good grip and durability. It's really crucial to get the right kind of grip going through those multi-turns. And getting your line just right. Well, you heard it here. Falcon tires, max weight, a good car setup. But you also need to have good driving skill. And Sarge here brings it home. Well, thanks again, Sarge. And uh, Agent 11, you're going to have to uh, get your car out of here. It's blocking the track. Join the Facebook group DieCastRacing.ca for all the latest on Marcus Firegun and what we're doing for racing. And then follow DieCast Racing News for links to just DieCast Racing on YouTube channels. And go to RedlineDerby.com for all DieCast Racing related stuff. And that's where we post all our race events, both upcoming events and race results. Brought to you by Marcus Firegon, the Canadian Driving Club, and the Snow Valley Racers.
Marcus Firegon here, and it's the Falcon Le Mans Legend Race Day. First, some highlights from yesterday's qualifying sessions. In the morning's qualifying session, it was Sarge of Code 3 Motorsports setting the fastest time of 6.03 seconds, putting him in pole position. Then in the afternoon qualifying session, it's Johnny Walker of Numskull Racing that puts in a time of 6.159 seconds, beating Sarge's time and putting him into pole position. Not to be outdone, Sarge of Code 3 Motorsports responds with a time of 6.117 seconds on his second run, putting him back into pole position for a race day. There was tragedy too, from suspension failures to horrible crashes like Joel Erickson's from Vulcan Motorsports. It's a real reminder to us diecast racers just how dangerous this sport can be. Just remember, next time you're watching a die-cast race, that these die-cast builders are putting everything on the line for the win. Then there was Mark Pan of Grumpy Cloud Racing, who failed to complete two qualifying laps, but got an unprecedented third try with a complete chassis swap and was able to record a time of 6.653 seconds. But because of the late qualifying, he'll be at the back of the pack. Let's take a quick look at the Snow Valley East track. From the start, we go down through Thunderbird Ranch. Then it's Weber's Corner, the Switchback, Snow Valley Loop, through Tanker's Bend, into the corner of Champions, and then to the finish. And now for a quick word from our sponsor, Falcon Tires. Falcon Tires. And don't forget, if you don't have Falcon Tires, you just have those crappy plastic wheels. I have designed this racing event to reflect that of the real world of motorsports. There are 12 cars that will be divided up into two groups of six to appear like they are running down the track together. Although both groups have been videoed, only the first group is shown most of the time. This is to better represent a real live event where the race leaders are being followed and there's not enough time to show groups of cars that are falling behind the pace. At the start of each new lap, of which there are 10, a display like this one will be shown at the bottom of the screen to show the current running order of all 12 cars by car number. At the end of the race, race highlights will be shown to further explain what happened during the race. So if you're wondering, hey, what happened to that car? Stick around to the end and find out. So here's the race lineup. It's number 68, Sarge in pole position. Number 42, Johnny Walker. 44, Triple B. 53, The Crazy Canuck. 72, Papa Pugsley. 0, Blake. 8, Igor Barron. 15, Alessio. 14, Joel. 6, Bolo Brown. 82, Mark Pan, and then number 11, Agent 11, did not qualify, so will not be in the race event. Okay, gentlemen, start your engines. Let's go. Sarge maintains his lead coming through the first turn and starts pulling away from the pack. And Johnny Walker pulls ahead of Triple B. It's Sarge, Johnny Walker, Triple B. Papa Pugsley, the Crazy Canuck, Blake, Igor Barron, Joel, Mark Pan, Alessio, and Bolo Brown. The ones marked in green have moved up, the ones marked in orange have moved down. Sarge is maintaining his lead, followed by Triple B, the Crazy Canuck, and then Johnny Walker. Two cars spun out and went off track from Group 2. 
Mark, Pan, and Joel, they go to a new group, group three. Lap three. Sarge still out in the lead, and it's the Crazy Canuck passing Triple B for second. Triple B lost control, he spun out, he collected some other cars. And this just in, Joel Erickson, number 14 for Falcon Tires, spun out again, but from group three. And that's the end of his day, he's got to call it quits. Lap four, and it's Sarge out in the lead, followed by the Crazy Canuck, and then Triple B. The Crazy Canuck falls back as Triple B and Johnny Walker pull in to second and third spot. Oh no, Sarge spins, he's in reverse. It's Sarge, Triple B, Johnny Walker, the Crazy Canuck, Papa Pugsley, and Blake in the top six. Lap five, and Johnny Walker's in second, really pushing on Sarge. They're neck to neck through the bank turn. Oh no, Johnny Walker's pushed high into the banking, he rolls. Oh my god, he's pushed across the line, this is horrible. We've had our first crash, and it is a bad one. Johnny Walker rolled onto the roof and then was pushed all the way across the start-finish line. The, the crowd is just uh, ecstatic. This is a horrible incident. Not ecstatic, maybe more horror-stricken. Well, this red flags the event, allowing all the cars to bunch back up for the restart on the next lap. Johnny Walker was going for a pass on Sarge there. Sarge really slams him into the rails, and he rolls over. Uh, tragic crash. It's unfortunate Johnny Walker of Numskull Racing was a real contender here and potentially could have won the event. Let's see what happens on lap two with group two. We lost both Joel and Mark Pan to spin out. There's Mark Pan's car. Looked like a little bit more than just a spin out. He pole vaulted off that switch back corner. And then there's Joel Erickson. And then lap three from group three, it's Joel Erickson again with a spin out in the same spot. And that takes him out of the rest of the race. With a little help from Mark Pan by the looks of it. And we're back to a race restart with lap six. It's Sarge in the lead, followed by Triple B, the Crazy Canuck, Blake, Papa Pugsley, and Igor Baron has moved up into the first group. Papa Pugsley's trying for a late pass on the Crazy Canuck for second. Sarge still in the lead. Crazy Canuck moved up to second. Papa Pugsley third. And it's lap seven. Sarge still out in front. He spins. Papa Pugsy closes the gap. They crash. Oh no, Sarge is pushed right off track. Bad news for Code 3 Motorsports. They're going to have to rejoin at the front of Group 2. Sarge has been leading this race for seven laps. Now it's Papa Pugsley for Manchild Motorsports, who's in the lead and he's pulling away from the pack. And that's Blake of Underdogs Unleashed currently in second. Here we go, lap nine, second last lap. Papa Pugsley in the lead, followed by the Crazy Canuck, and then Triple B, and then Blake. Number 15, Alessio Piccarellio went off track. Here we go, final lap, lap 10. And it's Papa Pugsley in the lead. Triple B and the Crazy Canuck are battling it out for second. Papa Pugsley of Manchild Motorsports wins. Triple B of Cheap Thrills Racing second. The Crazy Canuck, the A-Team, third. A stylish finish by Bolo Brown. Oh no, he got hit. Here's how they finished. Papa Pugsley, Triple B, the Crazy Canuck, and Blake. Igor Barron, Sarge, and Mark Pan. Bolo Brown with the drift. And finally, Alessio Piccarellio. Let's see some highlights from the later laps. 
Lap 7, Group 1. It's Sarge of Code 3 Motorsports, who leads the entire race to this point, loses control, and then gets hit by Papa Pugsley. And then the double tap from the crazy Canuck that puts him right off the track and into the ambulance. A disappointing day for Code 3 Motorsports and Sarge. Had such a great run going there with a great car. Sarge rejoins for lap 8 at the start of Group 2. Lap 9, Group 1. It's Igor Baron of car number 8 that's in 5th position. Stalls on the track going through the switchback. There he is, and that's going to push him back to the first position of Group 2. Lap 9, Group 2. We got Sarge leading this pack in 6th place. And then Mark Pan in 7th, Bolo Brown in 8th, and Alessio in 9th. And somewhere here, Alessio goes off track, but we didn't get it on camera. That pushes Alessio back to a Group 3 for the next lap. Here's the lead pack, final lap, lap 10. It's Papa Pugsley in the lead. Triple B and the Crazy Canuck are battling it out for second into the high curve. But Triple B closes the door and they go across the line bumper to bumper. And final lap, group two. It's Igor Baron leading, and Sarge manages to pull ahead of Mark Pan. That's Igor Baron in fifth, Sarge in sixth, and Mark Pan in seventh. And it's Alessio Piccarellio of Falcon Motorsports, alone in the Group 3, and will finish in 9th. And now let's check the final point standings. Papa Pugsley of Manchow Motorsports with 25 points and the win, he gets the trophy. Triple B of Cheap Thrills Racing, 18 points. The Crazy Canuck, the A Team, 15 points. Blake of Underdogs Unleashed, 12 points. Igor Baron, Eyes Up Racing, 10 points. Sarge of Code 3 Motorsports, 8 points. Mark Pan of Grumpy Cloud Racing, 6 points. Bolo Brown of Miniature Car Racing, 4 points. And Alessio Piccarellio of Falcon Motorsports, 2 points. Johnny Walker and Joel were out, and Agent 11 did not qualify. And here's Papa Pugsley. Papa Pugsley, how was the race today? And congratulations on the win. Hello, Marcus. This has been a great weekend for racing. I'm glad to have been able to be here. And a special thanks goes out to Manchild Motorsports for riding a great car for us today. Everybody knows that MCM has done a lot for the sport of diecast racing. I couldn't ask for a better sponsor. Speaking of sponsors, you couldn't have done it with just a car. The Falcon Tires this weekend has been superb handling. It's really made for some good racing. Yes, thank you Falcon Tires for the awesome event this weekend. And thank you Papa Pugsley and congratulations to Manchild Motorsports for the first victory of the Le Mans Legends. Contact me, Marcus Firegon, if you participated in this event and would like to fix your car, send in a new car, or be removed from this race series. Also, if you are interested in joining this event, you will need a Porsche 934 Turbo RSR that weighs in at 50 grams or less, and contact me for approval. This series is limited to 14 cars with the top 12 best qualifying times to participate. Join the Facebook group diecastracing.ca for all the latest on Marcus Firegon and what we're doing for racing. And then follow Diecast Racing News for links to just Diecast Racing on YouTube channels. And go to redlinederby.com for all Diecast Racing related stuff. And that's where we post all our race events, both upcoming events and race results. 
Brought to you by Marcus Firegon, the Canadian Driving Club, and the Snow Valley Racers.